A poll from late last year showed that 90% of adults in the U.S. think this country is experiencing a mental health crisis. And many grandestators have told us they're concerned about themselves and their children and the inability to find either a therapist or a psychiatrist. Add to that the new data suggesting teen girls are suffering in this country more than anyone else. Here to discuss is Susan Stearns, the executive director of NAMI New Hampshire. Thanks for being here this Sunday. Thank you for having me. So let's start with a pretty simple question here, although uh, there's a lot to unpack in it. Is New Hampshire experiencing a mental health crisis? Yes, but New Hampshire is not unique in experiencing that mental health crisis. Indeed, we are seeing um, nationally um, data indicating that um, we, we are in the midst of a mental health crisis in this country, and New Hampshire is not immune. What are the biggest challenges for folks right now? So at NAMI New Hampshire, um, where we provide a host of support, education, and advocacy services for individuals and families impacted by mental illness and suicide. We have an information and resource line, not a crisis line, so it's only available weekdays. Um, but the way we can help folks with navigate the system, so people call us with their concerns. The number one reason people are calling us is trying to access care. Mm. That difficulty, as you mentioned in the opening, about trying to actually get an appointment to see someone or get your loved one to see someone. So people really want the access to care. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of getting in the door. Is that unique to New Hampshire or are we seeing that across the country? Um, it's not unique to New Hampshire. Uh, we certainly had these workforce issues. Um, and, I think we all hear about workforce issues throughout our society these days. But in terms of health care, mental health care, we had um, workforce issues prior to COVID. COVID, again, has exacerbated that. I do want to take a moment, though, and just mention that one of the things that we have also seen, because we often, I think, focus on the challenges and the vacancies, um, is our mental health care providers. We have so many here in New Hampshire who have expanded their practices, extended their hours to try and accommodate the needs. So they are our mental health care heroes and we want to remember that they too are experiencing these same challenges. So um, while we do have this workforce shortage, we have some very dedicated folks who are working to address it. That's a good point. And also, Susan, that the fact that the, the conversation in many ways has changed, you know, in some ways, obviously you want everyone to get care, but this is a good problem to have that more people are discussing mental health, trying to seek care for their mental health. That's certainly a change in the conversation than 10, 20 20 years ago. There's no question that people are being far more open and talking about their uh, mental health challenges or their loved ones' mental health challenges in a way that we've really never seen before. And this is an unprecedented opportunity for us because we know that helping people to get to care is getting, you know, combating that stigma and having those conversations, recognizing you're not alone, that this is not just happening to you or your family, this is that indeed. Um, many people experience these issues. And so I did want to ask you more specifically about young folks for a second. Now, we just saw this new CDC report, pretty alarming, finding, uh, this just came out last week, nearly three out of five girls in this country felt persistently sad or hopeless. The survey was taken in 2021, the data just came out, and 30% of teen girls reportedly uh, considered suicide according to this same survey. I mean, these numbers are, are just so eye-opening, I think, for a lot of folks who heard these numbers this week, uh, and just realizing the, the scope and the magnitude of this when it comes to teen girls. And they, they are sobering statistics, and we need to t take them very seriously. I will say that they are really sort of validating what I think we have been seeing here in the state, certainly, um, particularly when we look at the increased numbers in the last several years of children boarding in our emergency department. So these are children experiencing mental health crises, waiting for an inpatient bed or other um, uh, dis other treatment plan. Um, so we, we knew that these last few years have been really hard on our children and this data is indeed validating that. The good thing with that is so we, we know that this is an area we have to address and we know we have to be taking special care of particularly our, our young girls but also I want to caution folks don't think you know, like if I don't have a daughter I shouldn't be concerned. Boys were you know, express things differently mm. and may also not be as op quick to be open. So I would encourage all parents to have conversations regularly, check in with your kids um, and check in with their, their teachers, the other people in their lives. You know, sometimes those other trusted adults hear things um, before parents do. Yeah, good reminder. It was like 60% for the teen girls, but 30% still for teen boys. Yes. So certainly an issue as well. Um, and then also in this survey, discuss lesbian, gay, bisexual, queer teens facing extreme levels of mental health challenges and also 
violence. I just will note, uh, it didn't include anything about trans or non-binary youth because it wasn't in the CDC okay. survey. But at the same time, we are seeing several of these so-called bathroom bills here in the Granite State. Uh, I know your organization recently spoke out about one up in Concord mm -hmm. at the State House. Uh, why was that important to you guys? Well, just for this reason, we've known for a long time that uh, a long time that our LGBT youth are at greater risk of suicide. And we also know from uh, organizations like the Trevor Project, which is a national um, organization, uh, offers 24-7 um, response for LGBTQ youth who are experiencing crises, but they do a lot of um, great work in terms of research and data. And we, we certainly know that um, these youth, particularly our trans youth, they hear, they're listening. So when we have these very public conversations about whether you know, trans people have rights, um, our youth are listening. And these are youth that are vulnerable because they are indeed identifying with um, these gender identities that are, can do face oppression in our society. So I think that's a big piece of what we as adults have to be mindful how we talk about these issues. Our young folks are listening to us and we certainly don't want as we have these conversations, which I get are, can be difficult ones, we don't want to inadvertently hurt our youth and having those conversations. And so for folks, if they're watching right now, if they're having trouble getting that access for care for themselves, for a loved one, for a child, what do you suggest they do? So there are a couple things. One of the things that um, great hope here that I, I take great hope in is that just over a year ago, New Hampshire launched its New Hampshire Rapid Response, which is a dedicated number available 24-7, um, along with statewide mobile crisis response that's available. So if anyone's experiencing or has a loved one experiencing a mental health crisis, they can call New Hampshire's Rapid Response, have an assessment, perhaps have a mobile crisis team deployed, get a crisis stabilization appointment, or get other guidance. Maybe you need to go to an emergency department. That is a great resource. Everyone should have that resource on tap because it's something anyone can avail themselves of. Then in terms of trying to navigate systems, I mentioned our information and resource mm -hmm. line. Again, not a crisis line. You can find it at our website, namianh.org. We do that, our, our staff will help folks with how do I navigate this system? And you know, things like, an example would be outreaching your health care, your health insurance carrier um, and talking to them about the difficulties you're having. They're supposed to have an adequate network and make sure that you're, so they can be a really important resource. That's just one example. Um, encourage people to not give up because it does require some persistence, far more persistence than it should. We know we need greater access, but indeed we do know people are able to get appointments um, and we also know that treatment for the vast majority of people works. Yeah and you go on to live a full life in your community. Um, so really don't want people to not seek care, persevere. Okay, <laughs> Susan, thank you. Really appreciate you joining us here this morning. Thank you so much for raising awareness around this. Thanks.